This angry leprechaun Ooh. made a video painting the picture that Christianity was the woke movement that caused the fall of Rome. Now I will say, he's good at editing, he's a good storyteller, he's good at art, he's good at rhetoric. But this is the problem with only relying on those things, with only relying on rhetoric. Because he doesn't have any actual substance. There's no substance to what he's saying. Throughout the entire video, he shows that he has a very poor understanding of Christianity, a poor understanding of Roman history. I mean, anyone who just has a basic understanding of this will see that he leaves out huge parts and that he's just trying to make it fit his story with leaving out huge facts and just making some things up. Now, it's okay to make an argument against Christianity, but it needs to actually be factual. But this entire video that he made is literally just a straw man trying to say Christianity was just the woke movement of the time. Well, instead of just making up this fictitious story, you should have researched about the history of Christianity and what Christianity really teaches. Because he literally says in the video that the Christians were trying to create a utopia on earth. And that just shows he has no idea what he's talking about. He's probably never even read the Bible. He's probably never understood basic Christian teaching of that's what you think Christianity teach it. And he also makes it seem like ancient Rome was some ideal to thrive for, that it was a Chad Roman Empire until the subversive Christians came in, ignoring the fact that the fall of Rome was because they were degenerate, they were hedonistic, they were corrupt, and so many other reasons. He just wants to scapegoat Christianity for all the problems of the fall of the Western Roman Empire. He thinks Christianity is just a religion for slaves, and the slaves had their woke revolution, and that caused the end of Rome. But if you actually look at the history of what actually happened, Christianity won the hearts and mind of not only the people at the bottom of society, but the people at top. Slaves, warriors, kings, philosophers, everyone. It wasn't just a bottom up, it was the entire society was transformed by Christ. And Christianity has continued to do this throughout history, making all sorts of saints. Yes, he talks about the fall of the Western Roman Empire. He conveniently leaves out that the Eastern Roman Empire existed for a thousand years after. Why does he leave that out? In the Russian Empire, these were Orthodox Christian empires. When they were Christian, they produced the most beautiful art in saints, in architecture, in culture. It was the longest standing empire in human history. Why does he leave that out? This woke phenomenon that we're experiencing experiencing in modernity is the complete opposite of orthodoxy, of Christianity. Wokeism is anti-Christian, it's anti-natalist, it's liberal, it's anti-authority. Versus orthodox Christianity, which he thinks is a part of the woke movement, where there's a high respect for authority, for tradition, for the king, for, for warriors, for saints, for beauty, for all of these things. It's the complete opposite of, of everything of the wokeism that we see nowadays. And no, it was not the woke movement at the time. Okay, now let's watch the video. You have had enough of the modern world. You draw the line at teachers trying to persuade young boys to cut their testicles off. You are not going to allow them to install a microchip into your brain so you can upload your consciousness into Reddit. You are not going to listen to another politician flying in a private plane try to convince you that you need to eat soy and bugs to save the planet. You do not align with this secular society. It is evil. It is upside down and it is corrupt. Exactly, seeing that the world is a very evil place and it feels like everything is against us and we feel disenfranchised and that's why we resonate so much with Christ. If the world hated you, remember it hated me first. But evil, something like that is a metaphysical concept. And what this guy is all offering instead is right-wing Nietzscheism. You think that's going to solve our, that's the solution to our problems is to embrace that? Has that built any civilizations? No, I think that's part of the problem. I think the entire problem is the route that the West went down after the Great Schism. And so we need to go back to the East, to Orthodox Christianity. That's the only solution. We need something solid that can actually build civilization. Listen to people like Jordan Peterson, and they convince you that the reason why this terrible botched society has happened is because we moved away from our traditional Christian values. And if we had those in place, everything would be okay. Gordon Peterson is a great gateway, a great intro for grabbing people from the outside world and getting them closer to God, but he is not the final destination. Jordan Peterson can't even answer the question, oh, do you believe in God? Do you believe in God? And I think, okay, there's a couple of mysteries in that question. What do you mean do? What do you mean you? What do you mean believe? And what do you mean God? And you say as the questioner, well, we already know what all those things mean except belief in God. And I think because really he has a Jungian view of God. It's all about psychology. He's not into philosophy and actually dogmatically believing the religion. I hope and pray that that does happen, but we need someone with a coherent worldview like Jay Dyer. There are people who do not want us to return. 
There is a woke movement that wants to take control of our morality and make it wholly anti-Christian. Jordan Peterson tells us that they have swarmed into all of the institutions and are trying to have a whack at another communist revolution. What you actually want is real Christianity. We want to go back to the absolute source. Christ is not some Jungian symbol. He's not some archetype. He is the real deal. He is the man who never died. He is God incarnate and the only instance of this in the entire world. And the only way to defeat this neo-communist woke revolution, which is the Antichrist regime, is to go fully into Christianity. That is a solution. Not Western Christianity, not Protestantism or Catholicism. They are a part of the problem. The only answer is to go back to the source, which is Orthodox Christianity. But what if I told you that Christianity was part of the problem? It's false. That the spirit of Christianity is the same spirit that drove the communist revolution and is driving the woke movement. I would say that's the most retarded thing I've ever heard. The spirit of Christianity is a holy spirit. The spirit of communism is the complete opposite of Christianity. Communism, what did they do? The first thing that they did was destroy churches. They killed priests. How can that be of the same spirit when they are literally the complete opposite? Communism overthrew the Russian monarchy. They overthrew the church. They are the complete opposite spirit. How, how can two things that are completely opposite be the same? This is the worst take I've ever heard. Would you believe me? Wrong. No, I wouldn't believe you. Stop spending all your time drawing art and read a history book. Read a Russian history book. Or would you say I've been reading too much of that German incel Friedrich Nietzsche? Um, that's a fair enough accusation. But what interests me is Nietzsche's accusation against Christianity. Nietzsche says that Christianity was the woke movement for the Roman Empire. And Western civilization will not have a future unless we finally defeat this spirit by realizing what it actually is. Now, you're not going to believe me saying something like this. So what I'm going to do is show you what it would have been like to witness the takeover of Rome by Christianity from the perspective of a Roman pagan. We can see the fruits of Christianity and the fruits of paganism. I mean, Europe, when it was pagan, it was a show. No one, like Europe was nothing. Christianity is what made Europe so great. So let's switch your imagination on and bring you back thousands of years to the days of ancient Rome, where you are a conservative, traditionalist, Roman pagan. You are of Roman stock, you are of Roman blood, and you are proud of it. You see, your ancestors fought in the legions beside Julius Caesar. And you won for yourself much territory and wealth and land, and so the family has quite a nice couple of acreage farm in the outskirts of the Roman city. It's very, very fantastic. Now, you're nothing special. You're not like an aristocrat or you're not like, you know, a, po a political guy or anything like this. You're just a humble farmer. And you are you live a simple life. You live a happy life. You know, you wear your bed sheet, it's clothes, you walk around all day eating grapes. Remember, he's a good storyteller. He's trying to romanticize and get this idea of a Roman soldier in your head, but it's fiction. And he's trying to compare that, the Roman Empire, to this idea that what we're facing now, we're in the we're in the era of modern day nation states, but nothing like that existed in the Roman times. And you live your simple life in your farming community, and you don't really bother with the city too much because it's full of soy boys. You know, the prototype of the soy boys were there and waiting for you. Now, you'd go into the city sometimes, you know, the thing that you absolutely love, you've always loved it since you were a kid, is going in to see the gladiator fights. This is like the UFC for you, you know? And you're gonna go in and you're gonna watch these great heroes, these great slaves win their freedom. You're gonna watch incredible things go on. It, it's an awful lot of fun to do this. Now, of course, as you've gotten older, you've learned that the empire is not in the best state it's ever been. And this is sort of like a bit of a ruckus. That This is bread and circuses that the empire, the emperor puts up. The, keep people distracted. Look, you don't understand that, you understand that, but you still love it, you still see it as a lot of fun, so you, you go into these all the time, every time they show up. You definitely have bread and circuses nowadays. Now, over the years of your life, you've noticed that as you go in these gladiator events, and you see the city of Rome, you notice that the city of Rome is changing dramatically, very, very quickly in front of your eyes. It's not the same Rome that you remember when you were a kid. It's definitely not the same Rome that you've heard about from your grandfather or in the storybooks. Something is going on in Rome. It is changing in a profound way. Year after year as you go into these games, you notice more and more new faces. 
You see blonde, brutish Gauls with their weird, stupid moustaches, probably already in history trying to sell you frog's legs. There's Judeans in the corner holding their magic book. Benedus Shapirus being like, yeah, Jupiter's a tyrant, I'll believe Judeo-Christianity. Judeo-Christian is not a real thing. It's a very, very new tomb. I think like the 1970s. Read about the histories. You either follow Christ or you don't. I have videos on this. Read about Jesus and the Talmud. The things that the Talmud says about Jesus, it is not the same religion. The Carthaginians, I thought you crushed the Carthaginians. I thought you got rid of these Carthaginians, these Africans, talking to you about Wakanda or something like that. Is that what they're doing? They're still around. I thought you salted their earth, but there's Carthaginians everywhere. There's Egyptians, they just bowing down every time they see a cat in the street, they start bowing down, being like, oh, wow, it's amazing. There's fucking brutish Germans. I'm surprised they even know what civilization is. They're probably like touching walls, being like, is that a, is this, this is a weird looking tree. What's going on here? This is a strange tree. Or no, they're probably barking at it. They're probably shouting at it in their, their like, you know, dog-like language or something. It was Christ who civilized the world. But the one thing you notice about all of these is that they're not Roman. These are the people that the Romans conquered. What the hell are they doing in Rome? And you talk to your friends about this and everybody is aware that it's happening and they sort of know why it has happened. Because when you expand and become so successful, you don't really want to do menial jobs anymore. You don't want to clean toilets. You don't want to sweep streets. You want other people to do this. And when you have an empire as large as the Romans, that means you have access to many, many slaves. And so what all the upper classes do, and even the upper middle classes do, is they start to harvest in all these people from the outskirts of the conquered areas of the empire. And they bring them into Rome to work as their labor caste beneath the Roman elite. But of course, these people begin to outnumber the Romans. And of course, they begin to change the nature of Rome itself. Now, the most dangerous part of all this is that these slaves do not respect the Roman gods. And they claim that they have their own god. They have their Christianity, which is so much superior and true than our Roman religion. And of course, this is delusional, first of all. It is pure superstition. It is made up atheism. It is nonsense. But it wasn't. The New Testament and Gospels were the best recorded document from that time. They had hundreds of eyewitness testimonies saying that Jesus really did die on the crucifix and he rose again on the third day. That Christ, God, had overcome death and he had overcome the cross. The cross was, the cross was something of mockery. It was one of the hum most humiliating ways to die, but it was overcame. Slaves were convinced by this, but also philosophers and politicians and warriors. It won over the entire society. They obviously got conquered by the power of Jupiter. They obviously got conquered by our superior vital energy given to us by our Lord. They obviously have the wrong God or else they wouldn't have been conquered. But against all of reality, against all of life, they make up some story that allows them to be special. Because that's the type of neurosis that a slave would have to think. A slave is not special. A slave is inferior. A slave is a loser. And instead of being able to digest the fact that they lost, they have to invent some delusion in order to allow them to escape out of it. But they didn't make anything up. There's hundreds of miracles. And when the Romans are trying to kill and persecute the Christians, you can read about this in the lives of the saints, the Christians didn't care. They were being boiled alive. And still, sometimes there would be a miracle and they wouldn't die. So they would have to behead it. So many saints were beheaded, but this won over the hearts and minds of the people in charge. You can call it copium, but it sounds like more of a cope that you're saying, oh, these weak slaves, they didn't accept their place. But what does that say about your Chad society that it got overrun by Christians who apparently were, were so weak, but we overtook your society? I mean, what does that say about the Chad society? Oh, the Romans are, are possessed by a demon or something like this. All this crazy made up stuff. Now, we're used to slaves and immigrants and foreigners and women. Having delusions like this, anything weird and strange is going to end up in Rome and people are going to follow it in the end. But this Christianity is particularly bad. This Christianity is perfectly suited to the tragic life of a slave. 
It doesn't require any power or standards or competence or discipline. It doesn't require any of that stuff. What? What is he even saying? Yes, Jesus came and died for everyone. Every human has dignity and value. But saying Christians have no discipline, have no competence. No, everyone has value, but we are called to discipline, to deny ourselves, to pick up our cross. And that's exactly what these people did that helped transform society. They had discipline and they were competent. That's why they won out. In fact, the more fail. He put bio-Leninism on screen. This has got to be a meme. Bio-Leninism is a political ideology. It calls for revolution. We put the working class people in charge of the nation and they distribute to the wealth and they place those people in charge with low biological status in power. This just shows that he has no idea what Christianity is about. Jesus did not come for a political revolution. He was very specific about that. He said, give to Caesars what is to Caesars. God is to what is God. Christianity is not about a political revolution because every political kingdom will end. It Jesus came so you could serve the kingdom of God, which is eternal. It's not about a political Marxist revolution. Christianity is about your relationship with God, about prayer, fasting, and repentance. True repentance is actually changing and getting better from the spiritual disease that we all have, sin. That's what Jesus came to do. He is a physician to cure us of our spiritual illness. Failed, you are, the more it is for you. The more they try to lift your spirit and say that you are special. And it spends all of its time demoralizing us that are in command, us that are noble, us that are powerful, us that are normal. Christianity spends all its time demoralizing those who are normal, powerful, noble. Literally where? Where in the Bible? Where, where, where is he getting this from? This is pure rhetoric. Everything that we represent, such as strength and might and competence, it says is evil, is not in favor with their God that they have made up. Where does it say that strength is evil? This is not a Christian teaching. It is the perfect catalyst for a huge population of people with no identity, who've been ripped out of their homelands and thrown into a melting pot to be exploited as slaves. So the only criteria to be accepted into this Christianity criteria to be accepted into this Christianity is that you are not Roman. You do not possess Roman privilege. Any Roman virtue that you have, such as bravery, means that you're a menace, means that you are evil. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! But as long as you are failed, as long as you are weak, as long as you are a slave who cannot access Roman virtue, you are chosen, you are good, you are in the eyes of the Lord. I understand what he's trying to say, but he's literally fighting a straw man. This parallel doesn't exist, so he has to make something fictional. Christians never said, oh, you have Roman privilege. Oh, you're Roman. You can't be a Christian. The point of Christianity is that God came for everyone. We didn't demonize anyone. No one demonized Roman bravery and the good virtues that were in Roman culture. If, if, if it did, then why would Christianity win over the Roman philosophers, the Roman generals, the Roman politicians? It wouldn't. And acting like Christians put being weak on a pedestal and being strong, we demonize that. That's not something Christians do. All we're asked to do is practice humility, is to be humble. This is totally unlike wokeism, what we're experiencing today, where it's like an inverted hierarchy with intersectionality, where it's like if you're you're black and trans and LGBT, whatever, that's at the top of society and you know, white, Christian, male, all this stuff is at the bottom. It, this is not, wokeism is not like Christianity. They are against each other, but he's trying to force his dialectic and say that Christianity is like wokeism when they are completely different. They constantly spend their time shaming us. They are not violent, they don't come out with their hands. It's not a very masculine way of conducting yourselves. Instead, they operate through feminine means. They try to establish guilt inside of our heads. They accuse us of the historical grievances of colonizing their lands in the past. They slander us for our Roman privilege and demand that we alleviate it. This never happened. He is trying to force this parallel. That never happened. Bow at the feet of their compassion. They walk in our streets and demand us to admit that Judean lives matter. They say that we and our authorities murdered Jesus, their God, their angel, the man without sin, so they say, got murdered in the street brutally by our legions. No, Christians didn't. They didn't do that. We know the group that did it. Just watch The Passion of the Christ. They write about it in their book. 
They brag about <gasps> it. We know who did it. No one blames the Roman soldiers. Uberboyo needs to read the Bible and see what actually happened. Pontius Pilate washed his hands clean. They literally let a guilty man free. Barnabas, in exchange for Jesus because the Pharisees wanted to kill Jesus so bad. No one says, oh, were these Roman guilt? No. Of course, of course. All these slaves claim that what needs to happen. He says slaves, but he literally shows Constantine the Great on screen, his vision. Constantine was the emperor. Again, it was the entire society was transformed from the top and the bottom. Is that we need to give the Roman state to their Christianity and allow them to worship the real God. In which case they will install a utopia on earth. The kingdom of heaven will come down. This is what they say. God will just plop a new Rome on top of the old Rome. So according to him, the slaves took over and they persecuted and demonized the Romans and said, we know we need our God so we can have a utopia on earth. So we can have king, the heavens come down. That's what Christianity teaches. His view of Christianity is so twisted and distorted. I don't know. It's like he's just read like a couple of Bible verses and that has formed his entire perception on Christianity. Christianity has never taught about creating a utopia on earth. And it will be free from the suffering, the tyranny of Roman instincts and Roman virtues. It will free us from all the pain and suffering of the world. We will have this revolution that will transform the very nature of reality and all pain and suffering will go away forever. How beautiful that these impoverished bums know how to run the state correctly. How surprising. Apparently they did know how to run the state. Read about the Eastern Roman Empire. It lasted a thousand years, the longest lasting empire in human history. So obviously there's something that they were doing right. But of course, just because it's stupid does not mean there's not enough stupid people to fuel its fire. Oh yes, of course, these Christians, they are woke. They believe that they are above the natural world and they want to bring us into this new ideal society, this utopia that they're talking about. But Literally, no. I don't even know where he's getting his information from. Christianity has never talked about creating a utopia, about escaping Wrong. from the natural world. That is not Christianity. That's not what we taught. Maybe he's thinking of like Gnosticism, but this is not Christianity. And these people don't care about a utopia. They don't care about heaven. They care about it. Insofar as it sounds beautiful, that it's persuasive to the dumb, unwashed, illiterate mob. But their actual motivations are much more ugly. They want power and vengeance. And we know this because we read their manuscripts. Tellurian. This is going off the rails. He has no idea what he's talking about. He literally just said Tellurian. Tur Tellurian? It's Tertullian. The resentful Carthaginian, who we conquered all those years ago sits around and boasts about how Christianity is dominating Rome. He, of course, is an ardent Christian. Anything that's not Roman is sacrosanct in his mind. And he boasts how these Christians are going right for the jugular of what is necessary to take power. His assumption is that Christians are resentful and they want to get back at the Romans. So when he reads the text, that's what he reads into it because he already has that pre-existing belief. You see, the rural country folk, the rednecks, the flyover states of Rome. These aren't Christian, these follow the old gods. And especially the West, the noble West where it all began. The entire countryside is still honorable and still follows Jupiter. But of course Tellurian boasts that this does not matter. You do not need the country folk. What you need is the cities, the bureaucracy, the institutions of the state. It's bureaucrats and middlemen who have changed over to Christianity. Everyone was converting because Christianity is true. And of course, Tertullian is going to be happy that people are converting to Christianity. How is that resentful? He wants everyone to be saved through Christ. They work their way into the infrastructure of the state and they begin to hassle the population and bend people slowly towards this new Christianity against their will and the healthy, normal people outside of the cities, they all believe the sensible, realistic, old gods of the ancient world. <laughs> but instead, these cities, our own cities that we have built, begin to distort and twist away from our control, and then they begin to attack us. And this is where their name for us comes from, their slander word. Pagan, they call us. Of course, in our noble Latin language, all pagan means is rustic, is from the countryside, is rural. But to them, that's the most disgusting thing ever. Something that they can't be, a true Roman. 
someone from the land. No, instead they want you to be lost in the miasma of the city, a foreigner, an immigrant without an identity, and anything but a country person, anything with connection to reality. No, you must be lost in the abstract world of the city where you can worship this god on a donkey. Yes, fantastic, great for you. Christianity is not exclusive, it's for everyone. Those countryside Roman pagans, they eventually became countryside Roman Christians. Again, you can be Roman and Christian. Civilization thrived in the Eastern Roman Empire. It was Roman and Christian. They didn't demonize the Roman part. Say there's a Roman pagan in the year 300. Well, how do you think that they got that current deity? They pro Their ancestors probably got conquered and had that deity forced upon them. So it's not like you're just going down an endless route because eventually they had something forced on them. But Christianity has always been spread peacefully. And then when you listen to how they talk about this stuff, you don't see these noble intentions. We know what's actually going on here. There's no noble intentions. Tellurian boasts about taking the athletes and the pagans and the country folk and the aristocrats and the generals. All of those native Romans, those people with heroic aspects, taking them into an arena during the day of judgment and torturing them to extract the suffering out of them that is justified. When the kingdom of God comes, they will be the ones sitting in the Colosseum watching us suffer. Tertullian was Roman and he wanted everyone to come to Christ. He wasn't condemning being Roman. He was condemning the pagan beliefs. They claim that we have spent the last hundreds of years oppressing them, torturing them. Of course, we've been nothing but too tolerant with them. Yes, we've snapped back the odd time, but only in reaction to their constant, constant pushing. And many of us think that we didn't go hard enough. But of course, they made up all their lies that we were feeding them to lions on the regular. Absurd things like this. Of course, if we were feeding them unto the lions, they wouldn't be here, would they? Now, this is just getting goofy. So many early Christians were martyred. You can read about it in the lives of the saints. They were fed to lions. They were stoned to death by pagans, by Jews, by lots of different groups. But as Christians, they were called to forgive. They were not resentful of this. But these things actually did happen. Is he denying that? Yes, this new religion, it's so very sophisticated. All you discover inside of it when you dig down to its roots is resentment against the Romans for the crime of winning. They were Roman themselves. He's trying to paint it that it's Roman versus non-Roman. No, they were both Roman, but it was pagan versus Christian. They didn't like the pagan emperors. And then he says, oh, they didn't like them because they were winning. Well, the Roman Christians won out and it continued to exist. The perfect symbol of this delusion, of this sleight of hand, of this lie is how our women fall for it. Our upper class Karens. They love this stuff. He is really forcing and trying to draw those similarities between ancient Rome and what's happening now. But no, it was because the men, the warriors, the politicians, everyone converted to Christianity. It wasn't because, oh, the Roman Karens converted and that's how Christianity took over. Romanness is so toxic and masculine. It doesn't suit feminine sensibilities. Jupiter, Mars, these big muscular supermen. Ugh upper class women so so closeted from the world they, they they just want something to love and of course this jesus of nazareth he's the perfect it's the perfect son that they never had they can adopt him into his heart oh this joyful boy who was roman gods oh so ugly what he's saying is just blasphemous and sacrilegious he's just really forcing this parallel that doesn't exist and that's what the rest of the video pretty much is biggest culprits the greatest guilt should be placed upon our aristocrats and our elites. Because they had all the power to stop this. They could have stepped in at any point and put the foot down and been firm, but they never were. They did. They tried for hundreds of years. They kept killing Christians. They blamed everything on Christians, but the truth won out. Because in Rome, there was lots of these like little cults. The difference with Christianity is they weren't secretive. They were upfront about what we believe. We want to convert everyone. And they did because the truth did win out. They did try and suppress it. They did everything in their power. And this new utopia, basically, if we just allow them to take control of the state and give them permission to reorganize society, then everything will work out. All the justice in the world will be restored. And Rome will rise once again to the heights that it once saw. Yeah, of course, this is what they said. And then they eventually got their wish. They took power.
and begin on this new project. Only when they cast out Jupiter and our institutions would finally the utopia come. This entire video, he has been fighting a false version of Christianity, trying to make it seem like it is the wokeism that we see today. And it no, it isn't. It's the complete opposite, as I've shown throughout the video. And throughout this entire video, he's shown that he doesn't understand basic Christianity. Again, saying that we're trying to create a utopia. Literally no Christian ever has said that, that we're trying to create a political utopia. Jesus was very clear that he didn't come to do that. But let me know if I missed anything, if there's any other, you know, rebuttals to what he said. But uh, please pray for him. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you. God bless.